Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel, Math Room by Teacher Joanne. This video is the part 2 of General Mathematics lesson on real-life situations involving functions and the focus here is just piecewise defined function. The examples that you will see here are the common applications of this function in the real world. For those who are not able to see the part 1, please check the description below for the video link of the first part. In this video, the learning objectives are the following. First, you should be able to represent real-life situations using piecewise defined functions and be able to solve problems involving these functions. The essential question for this topic is, where can we apply in the real world the concept of piecewise defined functions? Keep in mind that some situations can be described by more than one formula or equation depending on the value of the independent variable, and there are conditions provided in the situation, just like the real-life problems that I will be showing you in this video. But before that, let us review what a piecewise defined function is. It is defined as a function that is made by putting together pieces of other functions or a combination of functions. Looking at the picture at the right, we can see here that the piecewise defined function contains two graphs. It can have two or more graphs. And every sub-function has its own condition in its domain, which is common as well in some real-life situations. Now, let us have examples. First problem, a customer is charged 500 pesos monthly for a particular mobile plan which includes 100 free text messages. Messages in excess of 100 are charged 1 peso each. Represent the amount a consumer pays each month as a function of the number of messages M sent in a month. As we can see in this situation, there are two variables. The first is the independent variable. Looking at the problem, the input here or that independent variable refers to the number of messages sent in a month while the output or the dependent variable is the amount a consumer pays each month. Next, let T of M represents the amount paid by the consumer each month as a function of the number of messages M sent in a month. So here, we are looking for the piecewise defined function that will represent this equation. So we have T of M. In order to do this, let us first have the first condition. It says in the problem that a customer is charged 500 monthly for a particular mobile plan which includes 100 free text messages. So this means that you have to pay 500 pesos if you will just going to use the 100 free text messages. But that is the maximum number of messages. So, M should be less than or equal to 100. Again, you may use the 100 free or you may have only less than 100. And the lowest possible number of messages that you can have is 0. Meaning, you still have to pay 500 because you registered to the plan, but you did not use the free text messages. And that is possible. So, M is greater than or equal to 0. So this is the first function. Next, for the second function, we have to look at the other condition. It says here that messages in excess of 100 are charged 1 peso each. So meaning to say, aside from paying 500, there is an increase of 1 for every excess message. So 500 plus the excess, okay, it's worth 1 peso. And how are we going to write down the excess number of messages? That would be M minus the highest value in the domain of the first function. So this is the highest value because we are talking about the excess. We are looking for the excess. So M minus 100 gives us the excess to 100. So simplifying this, we will have 500 plus this is bit 1, so we have m or 1m minus 100. Simplify further, so we have m plus 400. 
So m plus 400 gives us the second function based on our second condition. So the condition here is if you have the number of messages greater than 100. And to check if this is right, for an example, the excess amount is 50. Let's say you have 150 messages. So 150 plus 400, okay, it means you have to pay 550 pesos. And doing it manually, so you have 500, the mobile plan, the excess is 50, since I mentioned 150, 50 times 1 peso each, so we have 50. So that's really 550. Second problem, the PSD's student government would like to have a fundraising activity by selling t-shirts during the intramural stay. They found a supplier selling t-shirts at a price of 25 QR per piece, but can charge 2,200 QR for a bulk orders of 100 t-shirts and 20 QR for each excess shirt after that. Letter A, we are asked to find the mathematical model that can be drawn out from the given situation that represents the cost as a function of the number of t-shirts purchased. From this given problem, we are asked to find the piecewise defined function that will represent the conditions stated in this problem. So first, let's identify the input and the output. As we can see here, the input is the number of t-shirts, while the output is the cost of the t-shirts purchased. Use C of t be the cost as a function of the number of t-shirts purchased. So here, we have to look for C of t. Going back to our problem, it says here, selling t-shirt at a price of 25 QR per piece. Okay, so the number of t-shirts is represented by t. So we have 25t for our first function. Now, how will we know the condition? Let's continue the statement. It says here, bot can charge 2,200 for a bulk orders of 100 t-shirts. Since it says here that we have to pay 2,200 for a bulk orders of 100 shirts, it means to say that the 25T is used for the number of t-shirts less than 100. And what is the possible lowest amount of t-shirts? It is 0. So T is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 100. Next function, we are going to base it to 2,200. For 100 shirts purchased, its cost is 2,200. Are we going to put T? Not anymore. Because it says here the cost is 2,200 if the number of t-shirts purchased is equivalent to 100. Next, and 20 QR for each excess shirt after that. Meaning, above 100, we need to add 20 per shirt. So what will be our basis here? The basis is the worth of 100 shirts, which is 2,200, plus the amount of per shirt, we have 20 for every excess to 100. And to represent the excess, we need to get the highest domain in our previous function since we only have 100. So that gives us T minus 100. Since we're talking about the excess to 100, for example, we have 110 t-shirts. So 110 minus 100 gives us 10 excess shirts. So simplifying this, we have 2,200 plus 20t minus 2,000, which gives us 20t plus 200. So our third function would be 20t plus 200 if the number of t-shirts is greater than 100. So this is our function for this problem. It contains three sub-functions. 
Second question for item number 2, how much is the cost if 250 shirts were purchased? To answer this problem, we are going to use the piecewise defined function that we derived from the previous item. So we have this function. Now, since we're talking about T equals 250, we need to locate where is 250 in our condition. Is it on the first, second, or on the third condition? Since 250 is greater than 100, it means to say that we have to use the third function. So we have C of T is equal to 20T plus 200. Because again, the condition is stated here is if T is greater than 100. So 250 belongs in this condition. So let us solve. We have C of 250 is equal to 20 times 250 plus 200. So here, we have to multiply. The answer is 5,000 plus 200. And this gives us 5,200 Qatarias. So this means that the cost of 250 shirts is 5,200 Qatarias. After providing you two examples using the concept of piecewise defined function, apply what you have learned in this problem. You may pause the video to answer this item. Let's check our work. The piecewise defined function here is P of H is equal to 70H if H is greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 40. And the second function, we have 105H minus 1,400 if H is greater than 40. I hope you were able to get the correct answer for this problem. Now, for the key takeaways, always remember that piecewise defined functions are useful to show relationship between two quantities that cannot be modeled using a single formula or equation, meaning those situations that contain several conditions. To end our discussion, take note of this quotation, Dear problems, I won't stand there and complain about you. I will solve you and keep moving. So this is the end of our discussion and I hope you have learned a lot in this video. Thanks again for watching and if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to be updated. Please keep on watching all my videos. Bye everyone!